Welcome back, guys, to yet another weekly High Five, where we're gonna highlight five awesome things that are happening in the life of MCC. So let's jump into it. Up at number five, High Five to the Open Roof Small Group at MCC. These are families coping with disabilities who enjoyed a safe day of fun and connection. What a great encouragement this was for those caregivers. If you or your family would be interested in the Open Roof Small Group, then check out manchesterchristian.com to get connected. And in at number four, we've got a blah, 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 Rooted Report. Registration for Rooted is now open and people are already signing up. Rooted is a 10 week journey where you take an honest look at life, God, and faith. But you're not alone on this journey. You'll be together with a handful of others who are sharing in the same experiences and are there for one another along the way. Hundreds of people have walked through Rooted and have been changed by the truths of God's word. And we're praying about what this can mean for you too. Don't miss out. Register now at manchesterchristian.com slash rooted. And from all of us here at MCC, this high five goes out to you and the next steps that you'll take to be rooted in God's love. Here at number three, Head Start is a child development program for kids and families in extreme poverty. Their teaching team is committed to the social and academic readiness of these families and their young kids. MCC's Manchester Outpost was with Head Start this past week to appreciate their hard work and commitment through the educational challenges of this past year. We love these kids and God moves us to care for those who can't care for themselves. On behalf of all of us here at MCC, this high five goes out to Head Start. In at number two, if you haven't already heard, MCC has designed the greatest, the funnest, the loudest family festival of the summer. It's called Dodgeballapalooza, New England's premier dodgeball event. This day will include a tournament bracket of intense dodgeball competition. If you want to create a team and sign up, now is your chance. But wait, that is not all that will be there. There'll be games and food and fun all over the property for you and your family to enjoy. The main stage will have live music, interactive segments, and even a dog show. <laughs> Dodgeballapalooza will take place at MCC's Bedford Outpost on Saturday, September 18th. So go to manchesterchristian.com to enter your dodgeball team, sponsor a court, or volunteer in creating this fun-filled day for our community. High five, church. I can't wait to come together with our friends, families, and ones to share in the fun. And finally, up at number one comes the work that God is doing in the life of Amber. She's been following Jesus for some time now and growing in his word. She attended the Manchester Outpost this past weekend before her move to college in New York. The Holy Spirit moved her to greater trust as she decided to follow Jesus in baptism. We are praising the Lord with you today, Amber. This family-sized high five goes out to you. God bless you as you begin your college years. Well, thanks for joining us once again for our weekly high five, and we can't wait to worship with you in just a moment. Hello. Welcome to MCC Worship Service. My name is Cooper and I hail from the faraway land of beautiful skies and cow pies called Missouri. I'm so grateful to be able to be here with you th this morning and um, throughout our service today, you'll see a QR code. With your camera open and pointed at the QR code, it will prompt you to fill out the MCC Connect Card. The Connect Card is a simple way for us to begin our connection together, to make introductions and begin a conversation of how God might be leading you forward. Another way to connect would be to visit manchesterchristian.com. For, for more information on what is going on in the MCC community, this is an option for how you may be able to just peruse the product, if you will, take a look at what events we have and past messages, and get a feel for what MCC is all about. Also, one of the most valuable parts of our service is communion. We'll be taking communion together during this service, so please be prepared. Gather the elements you needed for this meaningful time together 
be prepared with you know some some crackers or some bread and some juice we are ready to begin our worship service we begin with centering our hearts to begin celebrating our king trusting that our king is worthy of all praise let's go church let's worship <laughs>
above all names, Jesus, Jesus, sweetest name that we commit ourselves to. Welcome to MCC Worship Service. We are in a series called Thrones. We are looking at the kings God appointed and anointed, drawing from those stories inspiration for our lives as we carry out the mission of Jesus. Every so often we will press pause and discuss a few questions together from this message. I'm so excited to begin learning with one another, and I hope you are too. All right, let's get started. My brother and I have been starting a, uh, to make a new tradition. And that tradition is anytime we have a car ride, anytime there's a commute that's over 30 minutes, instead of just putting the radio on, he's gonna hop in the car and I'm gonna be like, hey, what album do you wanna listen to? And we're only doing soundtracks to movies. Now, s movies aren't necessarily my thing, but my brother loves movies. So this is us trying to make a moment, bonding, whatever. So two weeks ago, he hops in the car. We're in Brookline, Massachusetts. We're coming back up to Manchester, New Hampshire, so taking 128 North, and I'm like, hey bud, what do you want to listen to? And this is what he hits me with. He's like, I'd like to listen to The Lion King. And I'm like, okay. Like, so there is more to that story than just The Lion King, but I need you to know when he said Lion King, I wasn't hating it, right? I was like, yeah, let's let it rip, you know? So we put The Lion King on, and I'm driving on the highway, and this is an album I haven't listened to in like, what? I think it came out in 94, 94. I'm a grown man now. I was 12 watching it in the theaters. But when it cranked, when the music cranked, I felt like I was in the cinema with my mom and my neighbor running with Gazelle on African Pride Lands, right? I was there and I couldn't believe how like there was a moment, it was a memory, it was so deep in my heart and my mind that it instantly took me back. So I open up like that because that's what we're trying to accomplish with every teaching series that we have a memory verse. So we are in our, th our Thrones series right now. This is an Old Testament study where we're looking at some of the Old Testament kings, specifically Saul, David, and Solomon. Now our memory verse for this isn't an Old Testament verse, it's a New Testament verse, and it's about King Jesus. So in our audience, or uh, auditorium, at home, online, I would love for all of us to read Colossians 1, verse 16, and with the hope that this is gonna come deep into our heart, and we will have it when we need it. So uh, let's read it together. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. Big time, right? Like in the him, in the him, in the him, we're talking about Jesus, our cosmic king. Now, the other part of the Lion King that made me go into our sermon text today is there is a song on the album where Simba is singing, I can't wait to be king. So he knows he's going to be the king, but he's a little baby cub, right? He, he's not a king. He's like baby Simba. Mufasa's still running Pride Rock and, and, and Simba has some waiting to do. And that ties into what we're going to look at today, because in our text, we're going to see a shepherd boy named David, maybe 15 years old. The prophet tells him, you are going to be king, but it takes a long time to get to the throne. And waiting is so relevant scripturally. We see people wait all the time and waiting on God to fulfill his promises is super relevant in our lives because we're probably all waiting for God to do something. And I don't naturally wait well, right? I don't naturally, I'm not the most patient person in the world, but when we connect to the story of scripture, uh, God gives us a great grace to wait on what he is doing. So the first thing we're going to see, our first idea, is that God calls with intention. We see it with David, and we're going to see it with each of us. I'm going to read 1 Samuel chapter 16, verses 1, and then we're going to read verses 6 to 13 together. So if you can um, give me your attention in the Word of God, your attention, it reads well, if I read it well, and the story definitely moves forward. So it begins like this. 
It says, the Lord said to Samuel, how long will you mourn for Saul since I have rejected him as king over Israel? Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem. I have chosen one of his sons to be king. Then we jump to verse six. When they arrived, Samuel saw Eliab and thought, surely the Lord's anointed stands before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things that people look at. People look at outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and had him pass in front of Samuel. But Samuel said, the Lord has not chosen this one either. Jesse then had Shemar pass by, but Samuel said, nor has, the, nor has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse had seven of his sons pass before Samuel, but Samuel said to him, the Lord has not chosen these. So we asked Jesse, are these all the sons you have? There is still the youngest, Jesse answered. He is tending the sheep. Samuel said, send for him. We will not sit down until he arrives. So we sent for him and had him brought in. He was glowing with health and had fine appearance and handsome features. Then the Lord said, rise and anoint him. This is the one. So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David. And Samuel then went to Ramah. Okay, God calls with intention. There is Reflecting on the story that Pastor Mike just read us, sometimes what we think is best is not what God knows is best. Why do you think God chose a small shepherd boy to be king over a strong, mighty man? Take a moment to discuss this with people around you. Welcome back. Let's continue. There's a lot going on. Where we left off last week in our story is that there was a previous king named Saul and God rejected Saul because Saul acted in rebellion and disobedience. Now, just because God rejected Saul as king, the populace does not know that. Saul's still doing his thing. He's got the palace life. No one is aware that Saul's time is ready to expire except a handful of people. So in the meantime, Saul, I'm sorry, Samuel, the prophet, is really upset that there's no king. And this is actually, um, when we talk about waiting patiently, which is kind of what we're trying to dig at and work through, the first thing we're going to see about waiting patiently is for us to wait for God to work in our lives. We can't hold on to the past. Think about what, Saul was, what Samuel was doing with me. He's mourning because the previous king is out of office, going off the throne. And God's like, Samuel, I'm doing something new, right? I, I have a new guy. I have a new king. I have a, a new chapter. But Samuel didn't want to leave. So I can sense stuff in my life similar to this. There's God's inviting me to himself. God's inviting us to himself. He's inviting us to something new, something fresh. And maybe I'm holding on to something previously. And it's hard to get at what God is inviting us into. So in the process of waiting, we really want to be cautious that we're not holding on to the past. Um, in the process of waiting, we can't wait for people's approval. People have opinions of us. Some people have awesome opinions of us. Some people have kind of low opinions of us. That is going to vary person to person. But what we saw in this story is that Jesse didn't even consider bringing David in from his job to, to hit the interview. <laughs> Right? Like the prophets there and, and all the brothers are going to walk and do their thing, kind of pageant themselves. What about him? What about him? What about him? It's no, 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 no. And Samuel's like, do you have anyone else? And he's like, yeah, we got kind of the last born. And, um, and Samuel's like, we got to get him. And what Jesse couldn't see in David like the Father in heaven, our cosmic king, could see in David. Like he saw his inner being and, and the approval that God had for him 
was different than, or the opinion that God had for David was different than the opinion that people had for David. The next thing we see when we're trying to wait is that we can't be caught up in appearance. No one knows what God's doing right now in this story. This is crazy town, right? It, it doesn't even make sense. And in our world, we're going to navigate things that we're going to stop and be like, this, God cannot be working in this. This is garbage. This is difficult. This is painful. I feel lonely, right? I feel abandoned. I feel isolated. I don't feel alive. And we're trying to remind ourselves that God is always working. Every minute, every moment of our life, God is working. He is, the wheels are turning and his purposes are beautiful. And even when it's painful and dark in seasons and processes, we have a God that promised to be just and kind and to love us like a father loves a child. And, and, and so we're trying not to be caught up in what we see, but understand that God is at work. And the last thing we see in waiting patiently is that we can't waver from God's direction. I don't know everything that God wants me to do. Right now, I know that God wants me to be at MCC. Right? That's, God made that kind of clear in my journey of trying to figure out what's next in my life. And God in his kindness brought me here. I don't know what God's doing in your world right now, whether it's relationally, whether it's in uh, occupation. It could be family dynamics. God, uh, there's a lot of wheels turning. But sometimes we're just trying to hold on to, all right, God, I, I know you want me to do this thing. And it's not easy. And I'm struggling, but I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to quit. Samuel refused to grab a seat until they grabbed David from the sheep pen or wherever he's at and bring him in. He's like, I can't sit down until we anoint God's person. So this idea of waiting patiently, it's difficult. It doesn't come easy for me. I don't know if it comes easy for you. But when we sense God invite us into these things, uh, this is going to help in the process, and we might be able to wait well. The next thing we're going to see is that God molds for his mission. So if things don't feel awesome right now, this could be a moment of molding. And molding usually happens in fire and heat and tension and uncomfortability. So God molds for his mission. This is, I'm going to repeat the last verse that I read. This is 1 Samuel 16. 13. So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David. And then it says, Samuel then went to Ramah. I don't know if you've ever had this thought, but I literally thought the day that I uh, connected with Jesus, that my life was going to get much, much better. Because I think someone told me, Mike, give your life to Jesus and your life's going to get a lot better. And I'm not going to lie. In a lot of like, perspectives um, and categories, my life got way better when I met Jesus. But then on the other hand, life became more difficult as well. Like trying to be faithful, trying to love well, trying to, um, to, to live according to the scriptures. This was hard. But if I was David in this moment, I would be like, oh, I am winning now because the spirit of God came on me. Now, we're covering in this sermon 15 chapters of the Bible. Let's call it 20 years. If I had my Bible, I turn the page. It wouldn't be a day. It would be a year. It would be two years. The timeline is unique. But right after David is anointed, it's likely that he has that famous run in with Goliath. You've heard this story, likely. Um, the enemies of Israel are the Philistines. They want to fight the Israelites, but they're like, hey, let's not get everyone bloody. We'll have one guy go out and fight from our team. You send one dude out from your team. They'll fight, and whoever wins that match, that's the people that wins the war. And it just so happens that the Philistines got this guy, he's like eight, nine feet tall and he's undefeated. He can't lose. David is like a little teenage kid. He might be 15, 16, 17. This could be inaccurate disclaimer. No one knows for sure how old David is, but we think he's in his teens. And because the spirit of God is on David, he slays Goliath. 
And, and, and here's the part that blows my mind. When I look at David or the kings of the Old Testament or I think about thrones, what I hope happens in our hearts and our minds is that we think of the ultimate king who is Jesus. And as impressive as David's win was over Goliath, Jesus' win over sin, death, hell, is, is, it far surpasses that. So if I got pumped up about David with a slingshot, like busting this dude's skull, right? Like, which is a story in scripture. I want to be elated about Jesus on the cross, dying for my sin, resurrecting by the power of God and the spirit of God. And now I am totally free and we are totally free. And now the spirit of God that was in David and was in Jesus is in you and is in me. I mean, this is a big deal announcement, uh, but we love this stuff. Sometimes it is easy to get caught up in the world around us and lose focus on what is truly impressive. Take some time to think about Jesus' throne. What are some impressive things about that throne? All right, welcome back. Let's continue watching together. So David beats a giant. It should be an awesome moment. And look at what happens. Actually, yep. I'm going to read 1 Samuel 18, 6 to 9. When the men were returning home after David had killed the Philistine, which is Goliath, the women came out from all the towns of Israel to meet King Saul, who's still on the throne, with singing and dancing, with joyful songs and with timbrel and lyres. As they dance, they sang, Saul has slain his thousands... And David, his tens of thousands. Saul was very angry. This refrain displeased him greatly. They have credited David with tens of thousands, he thought, but me with only thousands? What more can he get but the kingdom? And from that time on, Saul kept a close eye on David. Let me talk about waiting with flexibility. We are going to wait for God to work in our lives and there are going to be major ups and they're going to be downs, right? This is going to be a journey. I, I wish it could stay like this or better yet, I wish it could stay like this. But in my experience, it hasn't been like that. When I read the story of people in the Bible, I don't see that. If you were to come up and, and share your story, I don't think you would say that. I think this is a roller coaster of faith and in the highs and the lows, in the waiting, God is working. So when we're talking about weight with flexibility, he put his spirit on us. We are going to celebrate wins and victories in moments where God is working wonders in our world. They're singing to David. Right. They they are celebrating him. He is. This might be the highlight of his life, at least for a long period of time. But the crazy part is, is David's win ends up to be the thing in Saul's life, the current king that makes him wicked angry. Right. Filled with jealousy. And actually, at this moment in history, David is an attendant in Saul's palace. He's a musician and he's playing music for the king. And he had a good relationship with Saul. And after this, Saul has no love for David. There's actually two occasions where Saul tries to end David by chucking a spear at him, like a spear, like a javelin. Saul is going to throw that at David and David's going to dip out of the way. And he's going to be like, this is not... Uh, this is a hostile work environment, right? Like that's, that's what that is. And he's like, I got to keep it moving. So it's crazy to think that God puts a spirit within us. And yet the difficulty seems to follow right after that. We also see when we're waiting with flexibility that God allows obstacles to grow us. If we were super honest, the moments that are forming in our life, like a moment that we're crying, a moment that we're confessing sin, a moment that we might be falling apart. 
I wish this wasn't just experiential talk from me. Again, I wish we could survey everybody and hear the stories. But the beauty of our God is that he steps into the moments that we feel pain and and, and distress. But these obstacles, these challenges cause growth, the catalyst for God to work good things in our lives. Another one uh, thing that we want to see God provide when we're waiting flexibly. And one of the things that God often does is that he gives us people to walk with. David had this guy in his life, Jonathan, right? No, you got it. Dude, I got a, I got a buddy named Jonathan that I love. So when I think of this, I think of Jonathan. Jonathan was Saul's son. Jonathan was the one that was supposed to get the throne, the crown, the oil, the anointing. He was the next in line. That was rightfully his. He's starting to sense that that whole kingdom is shifting and going, to, and going to David. And he's like, I'm on team David. Like his friendship, their friendship, their epitome of BFF, and that friendship meant more to him than an actual palace in a dynasty. It blows my mind. And when Saul is losing his mind, which is all a scriptural narrative, Jonathan goes to David and he's like, I got you. Like, I'm for you. I'm going to help you. I'm going to opt to side with you instead of opt to siding with my dad. And, and it's just one of the more wonderful friendships that we see in the scriptures. And God gave this to David because David needed that. I'm, I'm convinced we all needed a, a Jonathan. Maybe we don't have a Jonathan right now. I got a friend that said, I didn't have a Jonathan and I asked God a lot and God brought someone into my life to be a best friend. I, we want to walk with people and God provides that as a gift. And the last thing we see in the waiting is that God sustains us in dry seasons. David was a warrior, he was a king, he was a musician, he was a poet. We have a lot of his works. So imagine this guy, I picture David pretty ripped up, right? Like I picture him in good shape. Um, and, and I picture him like writing on a scroll, expressing his feelings. <laughs> and I'm like, that's kind of like, let's get Chris over. Chris, can you come? No, uh, Chris is ripped. And can you come write a poem for me? This is David. This is what he said. But, but hear the pain. Hear, hear what is coming from his heart into, into poetry. Psalm 69, verses 1 to 4. Save me, O God, for the waters have come up to my neck. I sink in the miry depths where there is no foothold. I have come into the deep waters. The floods engulf me. I am worn out calling for help. My throat is parched. My eyes fail looking for my God. God, I'm looking for you and I can't see you. Those who hate me without reason outnumber the hairs on my head. Many are my enemies without cause. Those who seek to destroy me, I am forced to restore what I did not steal. This is David in the waiting. This is David probably not even near water, right? This, this is David saying that he feels like he is drowning in life. We love the poetry in the middle of the Bible because whatever we are feeling and facing, we can identify with something one of these authors are saying. And David's like, my God sustains me even in my darkest moment. Listen, waiting is hard. We are conditioned in our culture not to wait. Amazon Prime is my like thing. I order from one other website that takes seven days to get to me. And I'm like, where is it? Like, wh like why isn't it here? What is seven days? Like, where is it coming from? So, so we don't wait really well. We were joking, you know, we get together as a group of, of uh, men and women and talk about the sermons and plan and pray. And we're joking about if you've got an iPhone and you're texting someone and you're in, in a text exchange and the blue dots pop up on the iPhone and you're like, all right, it's coming back. Like, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait for that response. And it just goes ghost. And you instantly <laughs> think, like, they hate me. 
They hate me, right? They, they, they don't want to talk to me. They're not into me. Uh, waiting is hard. Waiting feels like the worst at times. But again, we celebrate and we thank God that God is working in our waiting. So we said that God calls with intention, that God molds us for mission. Everything you and I have felt is going to come and it's going to be a gift to someone in our world, whether it's tomorrow, whether it's next month, whether it's next year. Someone is going to be feeling what we felt. And God is going to use us in a moment to be there, to listen, to hug, to cry, to hold, to encourage. Like God's molding us for his mission. And his mission is what? To see the most people in his kingdom. So God calls with intention. He molds for mission. And our last idea is that God guides with compassion. And there's something inside of me that wants to push back. Like, does God guide with compassion? Why does life feel difficult at times? Is this a real statement? And again, I just want to look at the text and let the Bible and the scriptures be a medicine for my doubt. I have doubt. I have worry. I have fear. I have anxiety. I have things that, that I have lies in my head that says that God doesn't guide with compassion. But look at this outcome with me. 2 Samuel chapter 2, verse 1, a lot has happened. Again, maybe 15, maybe 20 years. David was a hero. He was famous. He was a fugitive. He was at home. He was on the run. He lived it all. At this moment, Saul has just died in a battle. So the throne is empty. And this is what happens. In the course of time, David inquired of the Lord, shall I go up to one of the towns of Judah, which is the capital? He asked, the Lord said, go up. David asked, where shall I go? To Hebron, the Lord answered. So David went up there with his two wives, Ahinoam of Jezreel and Abigail, the widow of Nabal of Carmel. David also took the men who were with him, each with his fam, uh, each with his family, and they settled in Hebron and its towns. Then the men of Judah came to Hebron, and there they anointed David king over the house of Judah. Fifteen years prior, the prophet Samuel came, identified David in front of his brothers, poured oil on his head, and said, that throne is yours, the crown is yours. And now we see God fulfill his promise. Now we see God just verify everything that he's promised. And here's the thing with this idea. I don't know what God has promised each of us individually. I struggle with that, right? I don't, I don't know how that works theologically. What I do know is that the scriptures contain promises for the children of God. And God comes through all the time for his sons and daughters. And it might not feel it, and I might not even experience it in this lifetime. But one day, because of the work of Jesus, I will see the throne of God. One day, because of the work of Jesus, you will see the throne of God. And everything that molded us along the way, the good and the bad, we're going to be like, I see the throne of God. I see the God who sustained me in my dry season. I see the one who sacrificed himself so that I could be forgiven and adopted and brought into the family of God. When waiting for something in our life, it is easy to mistake God's delays for his denials. Here we see God fulfill his promise to David, but it took 15 years to be fulfilled. Take some time and discuss some things in your own life that you may have mistaken for denials when really it was just a delay. What's up guys? Welcome back. Let's continue watching. Two poems today. This one might be familiar. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. 
I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right path for his namesake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and your love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Everything that David saw went into that. Everything that he felt went into that. And so when we are waiting for God to fulfill his promise on our lives, we want to wait confidently. And this is only because he loves and he provides, he refreshes and he leads, he comforts, he exalts, and he saves. We cannot talk about thrones and David and kings without talking about Jesus. The, the, the crown that they placed on Jesus, it, it wasn't beautiful, right? It was, it was, it was painful. It was ugly. The, the way that they hailed him in one moment, like, oh, you're the king. You are our king. In the way they mocked him, like literally less than a week later, the way he, instead of running away from a battle, Jesus walked right into Jerusalem. And he said, I'm here. I know what's coming for me. My father promised this to me and I will face it because the bulk of the promise and the reward of that promise is sons and daughters of God. So that someone like me and someone like you can find freedom and forgiveness in the work of Jesus Christ. So what do we say? It doesn't matter who we are. It doesn't matter what we've done. It doesn't matter what's been done to us. David would fit that category. I fit that category. You fit that category. The blood of Jesus, the work of Jesus, the throne of Jesus, and the kingship of Jesus that all these kings point to is absolutely everything we need. Jesus is everything we need. And here's the thing. You might be like, Mike, don't talk to me like that. And I get that. For real. I'm not, I'm not like, I get that. And if there's pain in your life that's present right now, my prayer is that God does really, really sweet things in this moment. So I'm going to pray for us online. If you're watching and you're feeling pain, right, there's tension in your world. The Father in heaven sees that and knows that. And he's for you. And he loves you. And he gave Jesus for you. And so what I hope that you'll consider is that Christ works in really wonderful ways in dark times and in bright times and that if you give him a chance, he will show himself faithful. So I'm going to pray a blessing on all of us. Um, please pray with me. Father, you know our hearts. You love us. You created us. You're working in our life. There's things that we're waiting for and there's things that we need patience with. But God, ultimately, you are making us men and women that are like you, that look like you, that love like you, and that will one day see you. If there's anyone watching that has not said, Jesus, I want, I, I, I want a relationship with you. Would you forgive my sin? Would you cleanse me from everything I've done? I want you to be the king of my life. I want to give you the throne. Lord, would you do a miracle in hearts right now? And God, for anyone waiting in pain, waiting in loneliness, waiting in depression, waiting in any kind of suffering, Lord, would you be closer than ever before? Please, please, oh God. Would you let your children sense you, know you, love you, and be confident in your love? We thank you for this. In Christ's name, amen.
never fails will not fail me now you won't fail me now in the waiting the same God who's never late is working all things out you're working all things out oh yes I will lift you high in the lowest valley yes I will bless your name oh yes I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy in all my days oh yes I will and I choose to praise to glorify glorify the name of all names nothing can stand against and I choose to praise to glorify glorify the name of all truth is, we are no longer waiting on who our King will be. We have the King, and His name is Jesus. And He loved you, He loved me, so much that He was willing to come down to earth and give His life for our sake. This time of communion is a celebration and remembrance of that. The bread, Jesus' body broken out for us. Take it and eat it with me. and the juice, Jesus' blood poured out for us to wash us clean. Take it and drink with me to the King. Bow your head with me as I pray. Father God, thank you so much for this just amazing sacrifice, Lord. Thank you so much that the King on his throne in heaven was willing to come down and give his life for us. Father, we, we pray this morning um, that, that wherever uh, we might find ourselves watching this service, Lord, that we're able to, to make your name glorified in that community, Father. And we pray these things in Jesus' holy and precious and powerful name. Amen. Here at MCC, um, one of the ways we love to, to express our worship is giving. And the truth is, guys, when you give, lives are changed. Um, here locally, but, but as well globally, um, all around the world. And the easiest way to give is to text give MCC to 77977. You can also give online at manchesterchristian.com slash give, or you can mail a check to 1308 Wellington Road, Manchester, New Hampshire. Pray with me for our giving this morning. Father God, thank you so much um, for the continued generosity of this church body, Lord. Um, thank you so much for everything that you've blessed us with, Father, and I pray um, that we're just able to worship you this morning through giving, through being generous to the one who has given us all, Lord. Thank you so much, and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Is today the day you submit to Jesus as King? Do you want to accept Christ as your Lord and Savior today and bow before His throne in heaven? If your family is ready to take the next step, joining a group, giving, baptism, or you just want to talk or pray with someone, we are here for you. Scan that QR code um, and fill out that connect card so that we can get prayer for you, we can get you connected. It's an awesome way to find out more about MCC and, and get connected to the community. Now, 
Let's continue to worship our King today.
thank you, Lord, that your word is a lamp to our feet and a light and to our path. And church, as we continue to trust him with all of our hearts, he says that he will make our paths straight. And so we can walk with him in confidence today and live in the goodness of God. Amen. We love you, church.